Hello fellow hams and YouTubers. Well, in uh, working on my mini loop project, I wanted to be able to measure the RF field around the antenna. I've got a little magnetic loop that's diamond shaped that's emitting RF. And I want to find out, looking down on it from the top, you know, which way is the RF going? Is it going off to the plane? Is it going off to the sides? Is it, uh, is it going up? Is it going up this way? Is it going up this way? You know, which way is that RF going? Well, I need to measure that. And uh, to do that, you need a tool called a uh, field strength meter. And a field strength meter is really um, nothing more than a meter with a length of wire for an antenna, some rectification to rectify the RF into DC, and an adjustment perhaps for sensitivity so you don't overdrive the meter. A very similar tool, or very simple tool. And what you would do is you would go around an antenna with it and watch the meter deflection and you would know where the RF is strongest. Is it strong over here? Is it strong up here? Is it weaker over here? Um, a very simple tool, a very simple tool to build. So we're going to build one. Now, what is, this, what is the schematic for a field strength meter? Well, you have an antenna that comes in and then you have a couple of diodes. That's a terrible looking diode. Let's just do that right. Um, and then this comes into a potentiometer. Oh yeah. And then this, uh, the tap off the potentiometer goes to your meter. And the ground of the meter goes to ground. Well, that's basically a field strength meter. Your antenna, a couple of diodes that rectify the incoming RF, a capacitor that smooths that to a better DC and then a potentiometer or just sensitivity and then your uh, your meter movement. So let's have a, a let's take a look at the parts we're going to need. Okay, first up the diodes. You want germanium diodes. They're easily identifiable because they're usually in a larger glass case with uh, some color bands, that's not going to work. Anyway, they're little black they're little class glass cases with color bands at one end. Um, you want germanium diodes because they are a lower forward resistance which makes them more sensitive as detectors. Um, you could use silicon diodes um, but uh, and they would work but the meter would not deflect nearly as far. A 470 picofarad capacitor. A potentiometer 10k or greater this one happens to be 40k, you could use a 35k. Um, and then finally, a meter movement. And I suppose the last thing you need is a case to put it all in. You could use a little experimenter's box. I happen to have an old Toshiba AC power adapter that had a split plastic case. So that's going to work perfectly for my uh, enclosure. In fact, I already cut a hole for the meter. So, A note on meter movements. Down here in the lower right corner, most meter movements will have their specifications printed. They'll have the resistance of their coil printed, and they'll have the amount of current it requires to make a full-scale deflection on the meter. This particular meter is uh, 235, no, 2 point Wow, it's hard to read. 2.3 K ohm resistance and it takes 50 microamps for a full-scale deflection. Most meters are going to be 1 milliamp for a full-scale deflection. You want a lower number. You want them to be more sensitive. 
Um, if you can find one that's 250 microamps, that's pretty good. I'm fortunate in that I happen to have one that's only 50 microamps, so this is a very sensitive meter movement. That means that the RF field needed for full-scale deflection will be a lot smaller. My entire project will be um, much more sensitive. So that's the basic components of your passive field strength meter. Now I'm going to put it all together. Okay, so first thing that we need to do is we need to take whatever case or enclosure we're going to use and we need to mount um, mount all of our components on the case. So I've already cut a hole for the meter and drilled a hole for the potentiometer. And I'm going to drill a hole up here for the... Uh, I'm going to use binding posts for the antenna. This is a binding post. You might have seen them called banana plug connectors. So that's going to be mounted up here where I can stick a wire through and make my antenna. You could use a telescoping antenna, but that's what I'm going to use. So we need to get uh, these major components mounted in the box, and then we can wire it up internally. Okay, so we've got all our components mounted in the enclosure. Uh, uh, ground terminal, antenna terminal, the pot, the meter. That's what it's going to look like. Right there, sensitivity adjustment. Now all we got to do is uh, turn on the old soldering iron and uh, do a little bit of wiring. Now as I mentioned from the schematic, it's really a very simple circuit. Shouldn't take much work at all to, to put this together. So Here we go. Okay, for testing, I have my old Yezu FT1800 uh, mobile rig sitting here, and uh, over on the other side of that wall is a mag mount antenna on a metal plate. That's my uh, just temporary antenna. That's set to low power, which is 5 watts, so the antenna is uh, probably uh, oh, 6, 7 feet away. I'll zoom in a little bit here. And we are on a uh, clear frequency. I'm just going to key down and you'll watch that meter. Look at that. Full scale deflection with 5 watts on an antenna a few feet away. You can see my hand absorbs some of the RF field as I move it around the antenna. That's how sensitive that meter is. And we can drop that sensitivity down if we're in a stronger field. So that's our field strength meter. Now I'm going to take it upstairs and I'm going to use it to measure the RF field around my small magnetic loop. And that will be part of my um, part two on the mini loop video. If you're interested in the mini loop, I'll put links to the videos in the description below on this one. Uh, it's a one foot square mini magnetic transmitting loop for 20 meters through the bottom into 10 meters. And uh, it's kind of an interesting build. I've got a video where I build it and then a final video that I'm working on now of the modifications, final design, and uh, operation on the air. So, thanks for watching. Build yourself a little field strength meter. They are very handy to have uh, for, you know, just the occasional testing where you need to measure RF. 73.